Welcome to the Future of Structures podcast, where we talk to the experts who are evolving our buildings for tomorrow. And here is your host, Adam Jones. Today we are speaking with Arnie Heiskanen. He's a construction innovation agent and the author of the award-winning blog, AEC Business. So typically in the past, big construction companies will try and avoid failure at all costs. But this comes at the cost of innovation. So Arnie, today, he spends his time consulting big construction companies on how to take advantage of some of the potential disruption that is on the horizon. So on this show, we talk about what the construction industry can borrow from other industries, how experimentation is the key to innovation, and what technologies have the best potential for disruption. I had an absolute blast speaking to Arnie. Uh, If you want to listen to his podcast, you can uh, go to iTunes and look up AEC, AEC Business or go to his website. I hope you guys enjoyed the show as much as I did speaking to Arnie and without any further ado, here is Arnie. And started, I was one of the pioneers of CAD in Finland, actually, and did some pretty uh, awesome projects uh, already in, in the 1980s. Yeah. Uh, the n- largest uh office building in the Nordics, for example, we designed it, uh, designed it with CAD and I was uh, a leader of the CAD team. And uh, then afterwards, I moved into facilities management, because we didn't have much uh, constr- uh, construction going on in, in the early 90s in Finland. So I moved into uh, facilities management, and later on, into uh, internet, uh, doing internet business for B2B, um, B2B marketplaces and things like that. Mm. So I, I actually have been developing software also. Oh, wow. Uh, along, uh, yes, I have. I, I just counted yesterday that maybe I have developed seven pieces of commercial software. <laughs> and now <laughs> so are they I all mean, um, in to do, to do with the construction industry also? Uh, well, yes, yeah, some of them, but... Uh, the main thing that I was uh, th- that I initiated actually was uh, software for project portfolio management, and that is uh, it's it's used for all types of businesses nowadays. And uh, I was partner at at a, at the company called Thinking Portfolio that um, develops the software and sells it today. So it 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 was not uh, directly. Um, meant for the construction industry in fact most of the companies using it are in other other industries and in the public sector mm. so, so that th- that was maybe m- my biggest uh, uh, invention in in, yep. in the software business so and now i've been uh, for the last 10 plus years i have been a, a management consultant um, helping companies especially in the construction industry um, innovate and and strategize and do things better uh, and 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 during the last two years I've actually focused more on communication um, and and I I guess that will be my future career uh, maybe in communication yeah. around innovation and development. Yeah, awesome. So I, I read a, an article and it might have been through one of your blogs actually, but not long ago that the construction industry has actually been stagnant for over 50 years according to some some study I saw is this is this the case well there are several levels of course of to this uh, question mm. if you just look at the construction site how work is done at the at the construction site I would some somebody said that it's antiluvian so <laughs> yeah. so so it's um, it's very um, very traditional construction site from today or from the 1950s mm. doesn't look that different. Uh, we have more focused on work, workplace safety and things like that. But, but basically, uh, it looks very, very, very much the same. Maybe that's a kind of a statistical error that the, the productivity has not um, increased. Um, maybe if if you look at the whole um, value chain, mm. I would uh, argue that productivity has indeed indeed uh, um, in, increased. But 
but maybe that maybe if you just limit yourself to the construction side i would say that not much has happened really yeah yeah so so most companies who who come to you and seek your advice what what kind of problems do they do they do they come to you with usually well as you know we are in the construction industry we're very focused on execution we want to do projects we we are trained to do projects and whenever you want to develop something completely new or even improve your existing processes you don't find inside your company many people who are have the, have the mindset and have the readiness to start doing that so yeah. that's where i come i help them um uh in a way to think out out of the box and <laughs> and um, use some methods that that uh, even engineers can be creative i, I would say that mm. and, and 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 give them um, tools and methods and and facilitate the, the discussion and interaction so that they can come up with new ideas and start planning how to implement those so uh, for example a typical example would be an innovation or technology strategy that i help the company devise yeah yeah awesome so what what uh so what would that involve if you if, if so they come to you and they're and they and they want to innovate and they probably don't have well engineers from my experience a lot of the time don't have you know the entrepreneurial kind of mindset especially when you're in a, a bigger you know corporate firm or a bigger kind of construction company you kind of just get given a task and you just have to go with it so then how, how do you implement these these shifts in attitude towards towards risk i guess well the essential thing is to find a find a leader a thought leader inside the company of thought leaders who are willing to uh, paint the picture of the future so that that's one of the first things that we do we we want to imagine the future what could it be like in our business and 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 from from that vision that that is the most maybe the most important thing to to start with the vision and then to start thinking about how to get get to that vision and and to do the strategy so um, i guess that it's mostly uh, finding inside of the organization the people who are willing to work together to discuss the vision and also to um, to start um, thinking about the possible ways to get get there so so as in in many in many things people are the essential part of this equation not not any tools or methods or processes so mm. it's finding the right people and and activating them mm. to, to work together yep definitely because if, if i look at uh some other industries like the auto industry and you mentioned the leaders there there's some real big ones that stand out, like your, you know, your Elon Musk trying to solve the energy problem for the world. Are there any leaders in that you know of in the construction industry who have got, you know, the similar kind of ambitions and visions to to disrupt the whole industry? Well, I guess that um, most dis- disruption probably comes from uh, from outside the industry or from startups. So I would uh, maybe some companies like Katera, uh, which is um, one of the construction industry's uh, unicorns, they 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 are disrupting the idea of of how to produce buildings, and and I would say that that the ideas seem to come from outside the industry. So it's very hard for any 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 CEO for example of a, of a large company to be talking about innovation I, I've seen that that they, they are more focused on improving the existing processes so mm-hmm. so it's 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 very um, typical that big names like Elon Musk and and others are are the ones who are actually talking about construction yeah that's right so what what can we is there anything we can borrow from other industries say from you know auto or, or manufacturing or anything like that and bring in these kind of ideas into the construction industry yeah I, I recently I've been talking to many uh, companies that are um, interested in 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 lean construction for example so actually I'm 
working on a on a project right now where I interview fifteen lean construction um, um, forerunners in 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 Finland and and internationally also, and lean construction it comes from Toyota and 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 the manufacturing industry and it has many ideas that we could adapt and and can use in construction right away and uh, combine that with uh, information management it is beam and other iot and, and other technologies and you are starting to get to make the construction process more like an industrial process where there are certain standardized processes information flow is uh, uninterrupted and the the important thing is to start forgetting about the the boundaries or the silos mm. uh, in the business and start working together and 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 i i i've started to believe in lean construction very um, very strongly yeah uh, as 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 one of the solutions yeah, I'm only familiar from from that concept from the the book Lean. Have you heard, read the book Lean Startup before? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the same kind of idea where you've got the minimal viable product. So right, rather than going out and then try and launching some huge new idea, you you start out with something small, and then you can test the idea um, and just test what he calls the leap of faith assumptions and test them only. And from there, you can reiterate. I think, you know, something along the lines of that in the book. So is this something, this idea we can take into the construction industry also? Yes, uh, definitely. And in fact, here in Finland, <clears throat> Finland is a peculiar country in that sense that in in Finland, businesses, the government and cities work together very closely in developing the industry and and this, this has happened in the last maybe five years especially and right now we have a governmental program uh, called kira digi and the idea of kira digi is to uh, fund exper experiments experimentation oh, wow. so they have ongoing like something like 107 experimentations right now where they are try, uh, testing technologies trying to uh, come up with minimum uh, viable products uh, there are startups and and even more mature companies mm. taking part so so the idea of experimentation uh, uh, and and scaling up from there it's coming at least here in Finland. It's very strong. Yeah. Wow. When I, whenever I hear that, it's like the you know with a lot of experiments, you're going to experience you know inherently a lot of failures. So how do and from my experience in like bigger kind of bigger firms and corporate kind of cultures, you know everyone's so scared of failure and and doing any kind of project that's actually fails. So how how are how can you know how can they start taking this this kind of these, these kind of ideas yeah that is very typical I'm, I'm afraid and that's one of the reasons why established companies find it very hard to to you know really innovate because um, um, the mindset is that you if you you fail you'll be punished <laughs> and, yeah, that's right and, and 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 that's that's not something but I think that the new generation of managers, and a new generation of, of prof professionals. I was just talking with a big, uh, big client here in, in Finland mm -hmm. yesterday, only yesterday about this problem. And he said, um, th this is the Finnish um, uh, governmental organization, but they, he said that um, they encourage uh, people to, 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 to do experiment and, and, and the man they train the managers to accept a uh, certain amount of uh, insecurity. Of course, risks have to be managed. Uh, yeah. it's, it's, it's not, it, it doesn't mean that you can do whatever you want and fail <laughs> every time. Yeah. But, but, but the mindset is that, that you can actually uh, experiment and, and learn from the, uh, from the experimentation and then perhaps even scale up the, um, innovation in the in the organization so uh, it's the managers and especially middle managers play a major role in this
Mm. So yeah. So how would uh? So is it what kind of what constitutes a good project or a or a good bet or and how big should this these these projects be within the business? Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a good question. Some companies actually um, budget a certain amount of, of, of their budget into uh, experimentation. Uh, probably it's not uh, a huge sum, uh, depends on the org- organization. Sometimes if we're talking about tens of thousands of uh, dollars, sometimes uh, some companies use... Um, much more, but I've I've noticed that, for example, in other industries that I've I've known, become to known, you know, uh, there have been a large organization, global organization can, can have a thousand uh, uh, projects, internal development projects going on. So yeah. it means that the, it it means that they invest millions. Yeah, and well. I'm I'm not I'm sure that that's not happening in in the construction industry anytime soon, but. But basically, if you think about the project scope, maybe if if the project uh, experimentation takes uh, one month to three months, maybe mm. that's the scope that you would be looking at. Yeah, amazing. So, what are what are some of the for and say an established um, construction company? What are some of the key areas that you think they might be able to innovate today? Um, yeah, there. I I think that. Companies in the industry, they are not going to uh, develop technology per se. I, I'm i sure that they are going to apply th- new technologies into uh, ex- into existing projects. And also, they are going to hopefully uh, try to figure out new business models, actually. Uh, because the problem with... I, I would say that I, I think that McKinsey um, they they talk about the three horizons of innovation. The first horizon is incremental, so it means that you incrementally extend or make uh, make your existing processes more efficient, and that's that's the level that most companies in the in the industry probably are happy with. So you actually, if you think of innovation as an S curve, that for example. Um, something starts uh, small and then it scales up and then you you reach a plateau where you just extend the excess, existing S curve. That's 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 the place where most companies are. But yep. uh, maybe if you start thinking about how would you uh, create a new S curve? What is the the next thing that you could do? For example, I know a Finnish company. Uh, construction in the, uh, company Fira, and they uh, came up with a, a new business model for doing um, pipe pipeline or pi- uh, pipe uh, piping re- um, renovations in in, in older b- buildings. So they actually they created a new business model for that type of work, which was more very lean and very industrialized. So. Um, maybe that's that's the that's one of the ways to to think that you can actually take one part of your business and mm. start thinking how could we do this in a completely different way. Maybe it's a small part of your business at at the moment, but that, that's a, a perfect lab, laboratory for de- testing out new ideas and and getting and 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 I would say that in in the construction industry it's very easy to get publicity. By doing something a little bit different, so yeah. uh, it's also, I would say, it, you could actually think of it as part of your marketing also. Oh, definitely. But uh, yeah, but the, the the third horizon that McKinsey talks about is the explorative approach, uh, where you start thinking about radical innovation, maybe completely new S curves that you can create in the future, and um, I would say that. That's very rare in in this in this industry, and and maybe that would come from working together with with startups, mm. and uh, and and trying to because startups have the, that problem that they they have great ideas but they don't always know how where to uh, use those ideas. 
<clears throat> what are the what are the business applications and that i see as as a very fruitful collaboration opportunity for established companies to help these startups to to actually see where their innovation might be used mm. used in our industry yeah amazing so you mentioned how you can say whatever your, your existing business model might be, you might be able to add something new and innovate in that way. Um, there's obviously a lot of new technologies, uh, you know, in the early stages right now, things like 3D printed buildings and virtual reality and artificial intelligence and, and all these kind of things. What, what out of these new technologies do you think are most exciting for the construction industry? Well, <clears throat> I, I've, I've actually written about blockchain oh, okay. <laughs> as, as, as one, one of the um, technologies that will provide uh, interesting uh, solutions uh, to construction. But um, I think that I would say that machine learning, artificial intelligence, those, that, that seems to be an area where we have a lot of potential because Construction projects are getting very, very uh, complicated, and the amount of information and data that we produce every day uh, in, in, in projects is, is huge. Hmm. And I've talked to very uh, several um, construction industry companies that are now discovering that they have so much data already in existence, but also coming up every day that they could that they they are thinking about how to use the data to optimize, for example, their processes, the value chain, uh, the work uh, at at the construction site, and to learn from existing projects. To to because the problem with with learning from do is in, in in this industry is that we always seem to start a project from a uh, as is if it's the first time that we're doing it. So. <laughs> We That's don't right. seem to be able to learn from from the past, and to, to and that and that learning is inside people's heads, and and but now that we have um, tools to with IoT to collect information real time from a construction site, from every process, from from starting from the factory that produces like uh, building parts, like windows and and things like that, yeah. we have um, a chance to collect data during the whole life cycle of the construction and the building itself and and i th i think that 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 will be, be the biggest uh, um, innovation how to use that data and and combine it with machine learning yeah. i think that's that's what the one one of the most promising but also not easy uh, it's it's just in the beginning but i'm i'm sure we will see uh, great great achievements in that sector yeah, amazing. I'm really keen to hear also about how blockchain might influence the, the in industry. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, one of the ideas that I had was that uh, when we are, um, one, one of the issues, especially here in Finland, where construction is, the, the climate is fairly, fairly difficult and we have so much rain and snow and, and, and the problem is that the, the building what 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 we, the the elements that we use the prefab fabricated elements that we very typically use here in Finland, um, and and all the building materials, um, we tend to we, we we have problems with with the the humidity and temperature and things like that, and I was I wrote a piece about if if we would uh, use very cheap. Uh, RFID uh, tags on on every material, every building part, and collect that information uh, of of each part into a blockchain, so that you you would be able to track where that uh. piece of uh, uh, construction came from. What what was the what was the humidity that it was uh, uh, subjected to, and and so on, so, and collect all this information and what happened to each part, building part in in the process, and collect that into a blockchain. Uh, you would have a, a a record of everything that's that's in the building, and that that might be an one one way of of using blockchain. The other way, of course, is all the contracts, all the 
very small decisions that you make during the construction collect all that information in, into one one database that that would but what I, I think is essential is that it doesn't it must not mean that we have to manually input every piece of information that's not yeah. going to work I I promote automation automatic uh, collection of, of data and so on yeah amazing and it seems with all these kind of innovations one big big theme is this idea of automation and and you know there's a lot of people with jobs out there so how can professionals and builders and and architects and engineers and so forth best prepare for some of some of the disruption that might be on the horizon um yes automation is um is is going to be uh, more coming coming more uh, into construction i'm, I'm sure uh, and I, I think that automation in itself it will not take away jobs. I think that right now we have a lack of good professional professionals in the industry. Uh, at least it seems uh, for the moment, and in the future as well. When uh, people are moving away from or retiring, retiring and so on. So. I don't see that it's a threat to anybody. I see it more as an opportunity. And what they should do, of course, is to start thinking about the value that they, they are creating in the process. What is the actually the value that we are create, creating? Because uh, automation in itself doesn't create value. It's yeah. the people, and 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 that's and um, and people should. I, I would think that it would free up time for creativity and, yeah, and of course and and uh, and actually doing what you're good at not spending time on on routines mm. and that's the, what what machines should be doing in the future so uh, I would say that you should uh, start learning to to think about what you're actually what you actually should do where 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 can you best use your abilities and also learn new things learning mm. con continuous learning is essential yeah you, you you just have to learn every day well it doesn't end at end at university by, by the sound of it <laughs> no 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 it's uh, just a starting point the universities and schools should be places where you learn how to, how to learn yes that's right so it's Obviously, something you're really passionate about. What What is the most exciting thing for you coming up in the next few decades in the construction industry? Ah, well, <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, that's a very very uh, well. Unfortunately, I've seen that many new things take at least ten years in the industry to really become mainstream. We have been talking about uh, BIM for. I've been involved in BIM in some way or form for 20 years almost. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> so I, uh, now we're seeing, uh, I, I would say, a breakthrough eventually. So, but but um, what would be the biggest things uh, to look for? Um, I, I guess that uh, the digitalization the, and, the, and the industry becoming through digitalization, understanding better the customers. I would say that when we start focusing on cus on the customers and users instead of uh, of, of of just uh, cranes and and excavators, um, I think that that will be a, a major change that we should do. We should reposition ourselves, our industry, not as 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 a technical thing, but more like providing uh, value uh, to to users and and customers and and to go to become a, an essential part of, of the of the life of each individual and and not just focus on the construction phase but look at the construction as as a as a process as a life cycle mm -hmm. so so I would say that um, at, that we have a great potential of becoming much more than what we are today because automation will take will happen and it will take care of many of the routines that we are now using our energy on so i would i would say that move move towards 
uh, the, the 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 customer and and try to think more broadly about what what you're doing yeah absolutely phenomenal uh well thanks so much Arnie. this has come toward the end where can people find out more about you and learn about what what you do with your business maybe the best place is to go to my blog aec-business.com and uh, you can always email me at arnie at aec-business.com yep awesome and you also do a, a monthly podcast as well is that correct yeah i do i try to do yes and um, and my i i have great podcasts coming up in 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 just uh, the, the the coming months so hmm. uh, and you can find my podcast on itunes and many other platforms yeah awesome yeah i highly recommend if they like this show i'm sure they'll in, in, enjoy yours with a similar theme so yeah thank you so much for coming on the show arnie that was absolutely terrific yes thank you uh very much it was a pleasure for me as well and yeah and and i also i'm very happy that you have in your podcast it's it's great to have some more and more people doing this uh in, in the future as well because i felt a little bit lonesome sometimes <laughs> that's yeah the same here well I, I um i actually was looking for a podcast like your one and my one but i couldn't find it online so I, this is why i started it so ironically if i found your podcast first i probably would have never started started this <laughs> no no that's <laughs> well well that's poor marketing for more from my side <laughs> i guess because if you didn't find it but but it's great to have more people involved, and and I, 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 I look forward to listening to you in the future as well. Uh, thank you so much, Arnie. Cheers. Okay. Bye. Hey guys, Adam here. Just before you go, just one quick request: if you're enjoying the show, please leave a review. It helps our rating and ranking on iTunes, so more people can hear from the people who are making our cities better places for our future.